We welcome you today and we're happy that you're here. Come in and enjoy something good to eat and drink and most of all enjoy the message that we have for you today. Good morning and welcome to another wonderful day in another wonderful place. So right now as we center ourselves to continue on our wonderful day of remembering who we are and how we got here and what a wonderful place this is. I ask you to find a comfortable spot in your seat and just relax and let all the troubles or all the issues that are going on in your life right now be left behind as you step into this marvelous, marvelous experience. And I ask you to take in a deep breath and exhale and declare yourself right here, right now in the most appropriate place you can be. And again, take in another deep breath and exhale an agreement to be here among these wonderful people. <coughs> who care about you and who care about your relationship in your life, in your world, and with your creator. And taking another deep breath and exhale and recognize in this room the spirit of love, the spirit of commitment to you, the spirit of commitment to life as it was perfectly meant to be lived, joyously, harmoniously, with nature and with all of God's creation. And as you relax and allow this <coughs> awareness, realize that the perfection in this world is because you are in it. You, when you bring your highest self into being, the whole world changes. And here is where we realize that. Here is where we learn more about the greatness of ourselves. And here is where we are grateful for that. Here is where we are grateful for our marvelous lives, our marvelous relations with all the rest of God's creation on all levels. And here is where we learn more about ourselves and our ability to make a difference in the world. And we are so grateful for that. 
We're so grateful for our wonderful bodies, for our wonderful families, for our wonderful friends, for all our relations. Here is where we learn that if there are issues, then the answers from God's viewpoint are ready. Here is where we learn who we truly are, what we are truly meant to do, and we are thankful for all of that. So be it, and so it is. So it is. <laughs>
So I've chosen to sit again. Somebody said, are you okay? <laughs> don't, oh, and Julius, don't tell me you're getting old. No. <laughs> Just more season. But I'm doing this for a little reason because I'm a little bit, I'll just be honest with you, I'm a little bit on edge because, well, you'll find out why. And, and it's all good. Okay. It's a very dramatic setup, though, isn't it? Yes. Armani Exchange. <laughs> it's not anything too profound. Remember, I don't dress myself. I am my husband's Ken doll, and um, I just wear what I'm told. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lois, for doing that. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Lois. I asked Lois if she would do this for me. That's like wine. Okay. It is. Okay. So, the title of my talk today is What is Religion? And in preparing for this talk, it, um, I found myself of course, we did this in ministry training because in this teaching, we honor and respect all paths to God, all religions. And so as a minister, you are trained to understand others' beliefs. I hadn't delved into that for quite some time. And so I found myself reading much about the world's religions. And I didn't know this, but I'm going to quote a very interesting book. According to David Barrett et al., editors of the World Christian Encyclopedia, a comparative survey of churches and religions, there are 19 major religions in the world, which are subdivided into a total of 270 large religious groups and many smaller ones. For example, 34,000 separate Christian groups have been identified in the world. So I began a fascinating path um, of research and discovery and it was an exploration of these many beliefs and these faiths. And what I was searching for, what I sort of found myself searching for was, how do each of them answer, how do they go about answering that? What is the why? What is the what? How do they go about answering those questions that the human soul and the spirit and the mind yearn to know. And they are those questions of, is there a God? Is there an intelligence that is the infrastructure of this universe that somehow holds it all together in, in an intelligent and orderly way? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Is God even interested in my life? Why is there suffering in the world? And of course, is there life after life? And so, as I began to look at all of these faiths and these beliefs, it's interesting because your judgments, your walls go up. And so I purposefully 
put my walls down, put my judgments down, and I began to allow each one of these teachings, these faiths to show me and to teach me. And I was mesmerized by their beauty. I recognized that each of them was the best of the human spirit. And yet it became daunting. I mean, the diversity in what this species believes in. <laughs> and so I thought, what really? What is one really to believe? If I could say it, which of the religions is right? What are the answers to life's most demanding and powerful questions? And so I called out to the universe and I said, wow, I don't know how you manage all this. <laughs> but what? What are the answers to the questions of life? And so this became a very deep and profound time with God, all of those paths that lead to God. And <clears throat> this is where things kind of went awry. <laughs> because it became apparent to me that the universe had a very different message for you today. <clears throat> and um, see, that doesn't work for Ref Dan. <laughs> See, we had like about 20 to 25 hours invested in research. I had wondrous statistics <laughs> and information and data for you to process as I sat up here and looked like a professor. <laughs> and God said, oh, please. <laughs> We all know how to Google. You go at home, will you, already? Now, I didn't remind. I put my foot down. And I said, you know what? I am not Reverend Stacy, and I am not Reverend Cheryl, and we do not change talks midstream. <laughs> and God said, well, let's see what you got. And so we wrestled. We wrestled and we wrestled and finally, because I am more tolerant and loving, I gave in. <laughs> and so, <coughs> and so as I allowed my ego to step out, the divine stepped in and it came about as it always does when we surrender. Sometimes we think surrendering is weak, and yet it is the most powerful thing that we can do at times. And so I surrendered. And the universe does what it always does, and it began to share its wisdom. And over time, in the silence and series of moments, this is what the infinite wants to share with you. You see, you are made of the universe itself. You are connected to. You are a part of the universe. And the truth is, you are it. You are the universe. And you are alive. You have life. And the divine said to me, implied in that statement, is the reason you are here. <coughs> it is your purpose. It is to live 
light. You are light. I said, well, isn't that special? <laughs> I said, um, but maybe you could show me a little bit about how to live this life. What do I do while I am here? And it was interesting because in the most extraordinary way, almost freaky, this little book called God Made Easy, literally, but not literally, but figuratively, flew off the shelf in my den. And it's funny, it just caught my eye, and when I opened it, this is what the first page I read. Okay, so what to do while we're still here? Real simple, read on. <laughs> now, if that isn't clear, no <laughs> guessing what I should be doing here. Be kind to all especially to yourself. The golden rule applies here, also known as do unto others as you would have them do unto you. All religions and languages have their version of this rule. By the way, it's a universal thing. Find and get to know God. Your own heart is the best place to start. Have fun. For God's sakes, have fun. There's a lot to do and to be and see here. You might as well make the most out of the visit. And as they say, you only go around once at least in this body. Care about what matters. Here's a hint. At the end, you won't remember or care much about the money you made. <laughs> but you will remember and care about who you loved and who loved you back. This will become obvious when you start tuning in. Just remember, all you can take with you is who you have become and what you learned on your journey. The rest is my illusion. Be authentic. Speak your truth. God created you to be uniquely different from anyone else. God had reason. Don't mess with the program. <laughs> Try to develop a new attitude of gratitude. When you start to see your life in this way, you will be amazed at how different it can look. I read a quote on the internet, I think I've shared it with you before, but when gratitude steps in, misery steps out. Don't hold grudges. Life really is too short. Forgiveness is a good thing. And anyway, it really feels a lot better. Hang out in the present, not in the future or in the past. Each moment is God's gift. Why do you think it's called the present? Start to surrender. You may know this as thy will be done or let go and let God. The fact is that the one who created butterfly wings and the Himalayan mountains actually knows its stuff. 
you may want to let God lead for a change. Look for the reasons. Look for the lessons. Learn all you can. Get wise and stay humble. Lastly, look toward the journey home. Your soul, your being is here for all eternity. So don't sweat the small stuff. God bless. Peace be with you. Enjoy the ride. Shalom. Hallelujah. Namaste. Walk in grace and beauty. Om. <laughs> Peace. Amen. And maybe, just maybe, if we each do our part, and with a little help from God, this wonderful spinning blue orb on which we all find ourselves can finally be healed. Remember, we are all in this together. More will be revealed. And never, ever forget, you are loved. There is no end. Mm. And so, thank you. But I could have. <laughs> Kidding. And after reading that and praying about it, the God of my being said, that's how you live. It's very simple. You know, you don't need tens of thousands of religions to figure that out. Because, Reverend Dan, when you read this, it resonated with you because you know this. Mm -hmm. Because this is how you were designed. So the Divine had one more message. And the Divine, and I saw this, and it, it reminded me of what God was telling me. And God was saying, you are powerful <coughs> beings. You see, what you think and, and what you say and what you feel and what you do <coughs> affects the world around you. <coughs> see, you are powerful beings. You are beings of energy. And your energy ripples out into the world. And I have given you a great gift. I did not make you robots. I gave you perfect free will. And so this energy, this power I have given you, you have the power and the capacity to use it to do great things. <clears throat> and you've been given freedom to use it in a way that is not so good. And so, in time, as the universe does, little bits and pieces came to me. And God showed me this little video and said, this is what happens when you don't use your power correctly. Russell?
beings and when we don't use that power correctly it has to go somewhere but God in its goodness in time said this is what it looks like when you use your power correctly Russell I would go ahead and grab one of these if I were you. <laughs> <laughs>
My buddy called and asked if I'd like to go help him pay for people's groceries. What happened next was amazing. We're just two regular guys. Anyone could do this. Go make a difference today. And it was made by Mike Lewis of Jesus Painter Ministries. What do you know? A Christian? <laughs> I'm kidding. In a split second, with a little bit, and the willingness to take a risk and to show a little love, you can create heaven for a moment for someone. And the divine said to me, please quit waiting for God to come and bring heaven because you are already here. So maybe for today, the topic, what is religion, can be summed up with two ideas. The first from the Dalai Lama, And the Dalai Lama says, this is my simple religion. There is no need for temples, no need for complicated philosophy. Our own brain, our own heart is our temple. And the philosophy is kindness. And then this next one, I just love the great mystic Rumi. And he said this, I belong to no religion. My religion is love. Every heart is my temple. So as I close my talk, I close it with the idea of namaste. I didn't really know the meaning of namaste. I honor the place in you in which the entire universe dwells. I honor the place in you which is love, of truth, of light, and of peace. When you are in that place in you, and I am in that place in me, we are one. I love you all. Namaste. Namaste. Uh, the first time I heard this song, it was at a jazz club called Dante's in L.A. And I heard this guitarist, uh, uh, Lenny Bro, Ray Brown was playing bass. Uh, and it took me probably another ten years to realize, oh, there's words to this song? Uh, I just heard it as an instrumental, so I'm going to start it off as an instrumental. <laughs>
So if you'll if you'll stand and connect. <laughs> So let's take a deep collective breath. And so, if it's comfortable for you to do so, just close your eyes, allow my voice to be your voice as I speak in the first person. And so I celebrate the idea that there is only one life. And it is love. And it is God's life. And I celebrate that this one life that is love, that is God's life, is my life. And so on this day, I give thanks, knowing that I live in a loving universe whose motivation is love. I give thanks knowing that I am loved, that the universe has my back. And I celebrate today the power that I have, the power to bring heaven into another's life. And so today I take charge of my thoughts and my words and my feelings and what I do. And I do it in love. And I recognize that that is how heaven shows up on earth. And so I give thanks. I give thanks for each and every person here. I give thanks that this week, this love week, is filled with love for each person. And now I simply release my word into the perfect workings of the law. I know that as I have spoken, it is already done. And so I relax, I love, I let go, and I let God. And together we say, Yes, so it is. Let's sing.